Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Sesso here brings a video here today bring guys a brand new video on how to help you guys suck less at graphic design <laughs> Jesus, That doesn't get any easier to say at any point at all But if you guys do think that your designs suck, which I don't think they probably do But if they do if you think they do, you know you You know hopefully this video actually help you guys out. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so for the first thing I want to mention in today's video, it's actually white space. In the world of graphic design, I cannot stress enough how much white space can either make or break your project. Revisit your project before actually saying anything is actually final and ask yourself, is it too big? Is it too small? <laughs> I'm an adult. In a lot of my daily practice, I find that when you add a person, a character, or an object, you're really looking to fill some space into your design. Most times with new designers, however, they're afraid to really allow the object to fill space. So scaling up objects or people can naturally have an effect on the design. That effect being that your canvas is a lot easier to control and you won't have much empty space either, which can immediately lend yourself to the idea of that less is more because there's not much to actually worry about. In some cases, too big of text leads to a problem of using too much of the white space. Take a live stream intermission screen for instance. This text is super big and makes sense because you want people to read it, right? However, once they read it once, they don't necessarily need to read it again. So drop the text size down to be a little bit more smaller. And you should quickly understand the design actually feels a lot more cleaner and approachable. White space is a game of do's and don'ts that you'll hopefully naturally pick up over time. However, I hope this quick demonstration kind of speeds it up a little bit. <laughs> Now, next up is an absolute deal breaker, and that's poor image quality. And I do feel like a lot of you guys tend to forget how to actually search images on Google, so let me show you guys a little something something, okay? If you don't know this... Ouch. When you guys go to type something out into Google and to find certain things, adding in PNG at the end will help you get more HD images. Something else, actually, is under the Google mic icon is the tools. Select it and choose size, and then change your size from any to large. Instantly, you guys will find more usable HD options that scale higher than about a thousand pixels rather than like the two to three hundred pixels and ultimately find better images. Might I add as well as that under the same tools bar, under colors, however, you can choose the word transparent to find more transparent images. Now, this might seem like common knowledge, but for the record, it, I, I do see your guys' portfolios. I see there's image issues. However, let me tell you one thing really quick. If you guys ever find yourself getting the .webp format option, then you, you, you guys will find it out once in a while when you guys look on Google and whatnot. The way you guys can actually open that up is if you guys right click on the actual image itself and choose copy image address, then heading into Photoshop, going to file, open or control O, pasting the link in there and pressing open. As a designer, I don't know about you guys, but I've been in here for a minute. I never knew you can actually do this. So I wanted to show you guys that you can do that. And now we can move on to the next one. So next up is the idea of too many focal layers. Now it's not really the most accurate term, but if your designs have this idea of adding in more depth, lighting, and just different kind of images, and it looks like this though, there's nothing necessarily bad about this, but it's hard to focus on the main subject. And an even bigger question is, is there even one in the first place? Have you guys ever been told to blend this in more? If you were to look at your composition, are there multiple things that are grabbing the attention of what you originally wanted people to actually focus on? You might just be a few gradients and tweaks away from a very strong composition. Whether it's using texture to tie in elements together or gradients to maximize the contrast of the foreground and the background. You wanna make sure that the more that you add, the more that you actually combine elements, make sure that they flow, and also to intentionally place and fix things as if it is one image. Once you guys actually pick this up and understand a little bit more further, you can actually go ahead and bend these rules because you actually know the basics. So keep in mind these few basic ideas. There's gradients, there's color, there's color correction, and there's texture. Those are gonna be your best options and your best friends, I guess, when it comes to basics. So hopefully you can take those, run with them, and hopefully I can give a little example so you guys also look at what that means. But yeah, let's move on to the next one. So for this next idea, it's gonna come to a shock for some of you guys, I'm not gonna lie, but do not be afraid to not center everything. Something almost all designers start off with, including myself, is you think that symmetry and middle center designs are everything. And no guys, if you guys are actually thinking like this, you're probably hindering how fast you actually develop in design. But they will actually probably notice that the design does feel very balanced. And what's the best way to achieve balance to most people? That's symmetry. However, balance can include a number of different layouts and developed compositions, as well as stopping beginners and using layer styles and workarounds for poor composition choices. Using things like weight in certain objects, or the way you might actually asymmetrically place text. Don't be afraid to make things bigger and even bleed into certain sides. Also, try out different fonts till one actually fits the composition that you want. Design isn't always use what you have and make it work. 
It's also creating what you have by any means necessary. New fonts, different color combinations, new textures, objects, go get them. That's what art is all about. Now, for the last tip in today's video, it's gonna be very, very simple and very easy. The color black is very scary. Literally add anything to it. I'm talking noise, texture, literally anything. The idea of the color black being alone on a canvas can immediately fall into the idea of being too empty. And as a beginner, I do think that using black is a little bit scary. So I'm gonna say is use some texture, you're gonna be better off. And it's also gonna make your design look a lot more cooler. And the idea, if you don't have like a really strong typography choice, using pure black is definitely a no-go. That's what I'm gonna go with. All right, guys, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully you guys learned something. And honestly, I kept it lighthearted enough, hopefully. Um, these ideas are the actual tips. So just kind of make sure these things you probably ignore or be aware of. That way, if you guys look at, if you guys can relate to any of these things in your designs, you go ahead and look at them. You're like, oh, crap. Maybe this is where you can get excelled in the world of graphic design. Maybe this video is it for you now. If it is, leave a like. If it's not, leave a like and tell me what I could do. But with that being said, that's the end of today's video here today. I love you guys so very much. Sesame HQ out. You're having to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay a freaking product, guys. Later. Much love. Peace. And if you guys still end up sucking after this video, um, hmm. Comment I still suck with the reason why. And hopefully I can help. There you go.